What's good, Ravens fans? It's your boy, JG. Back with another reaction today. We're going to react to Speak. Uh, it's on Fox Sports 1, I believe. And they're going to talk about Lamar Jackson and whether we should trade him. So let's jump right on in. I was thinking about this, Dave, and it's very fascinating. So many people want to have a Lamar Jackson conversation that I believe is unrealistic. I think the more realistic Lamar Jackson conversation is this. Would you rather give Lamar Jackson Deshaun Watson money? Because clearly that's what he wants, Deshaun Watson money. Otherwise, he probably or likely would have gotten a deal done before the season. So option A, give Lamar Jackson Deshaun Watson money. Option B, trade Lamar Jackson. Now, you at home might be saying, well, Acho Lamar could play under the franchise tag. I would caution you that that is likely not realistic. Because if you're Lamar Jackson, you wouldn't want to play under a tag given the fact you've been hurt the last two years for six games each. And if you're the Ravens, you wouldn't want to tag Lamar Jackson because he's been hurt the last two years for six games each. And that tag is $45 million, of which the salary cap would incur that debt immediately. So really, as I look at it, two options, Dave Hellman. Either he gets Deshaun Watson money or you trade him. With those two options at play, what would, what should the Ravens do? And would it be crazy for the Ravens to trade Lamar Jackson? So let's talk about a couple of things. Um, and I'm going to answer his questions that he asked. So first, the Ravens do not want to trade Lamar Jackson. They want him to sign the contract they want. He doesn't want to do that. So they're not going to just trade Lamar Jackson for nothing. Um, and if that means they have to franchise tag him and pay that, that is 100% what they were going to do. Now, I did see that the Ravens are still, I really do believe they're interested in keeping Lamar. And I do think that they're hoping that uh, Joe Burrow signs a contract less than the max that he can sign, right? And when I say that, not Deshaun Watson money. If that happens, I, I do honestly think Lamar concedes, um, and then we get the Ray, we get our quarterback, and everything is good. I honestly believe that. However, um, if that doesn't happen, if you trade Lamar Jackson, it's unprecedented. Guys, we have to break this down. Lamar Jackson's a lot of things for us. A great quarterback, yes. A great leader of a franchise on and off the field, yes. Injury prone, the last two years, you can say yes. Cool, you know. However, he's also the only MVP in our franchise. He is the best player at the most important position in our franchise, right? Again, is he has he done what he's... You know, the things that Ray Lewis has done? Of course not. Ed Reed, of course not. But he's the quarterback. And that does mean something, right? It, it is weird that the best quarterback in your franchise history ha isn't on your team for more than one contract, right? Bad teams do stuff like that. You know, good teams don't do things like that. Um, and so it would be just weird that the only MVP for our team um, didn't get a second contract especially when someone else in the league has that same contract. That's just weird to me. Anyway, There's a lot of nuance to this conversation, as there always is with quarterbacks and quarterback contracts. But if those are the options you're putting in front of me, I'd probably trade him. Honestly, like if, if the choices are 230 plus million fully guaranteed for a guy that now you can say has shown a trend of being unavailable last two years, what, you say six games a year? Six games a year. 12 games, that is that is a sizable chunk of the last two seasons. And obviously, the, this most recent injury, no shade toward Lamar at all for not playing. With the PCL, we talked about it all season. I don't blame him, but Lamar Jackson's injury drastically affected the Ravens' playoff push and how viable they were for the postseason. If those are the choices, think about, I mean, think about... But again, it's see, I'm going to keep on saying this because I don't want anyone to forget this. Lamar Jackson, one, got hurt in the pocket. I know you guys heard me say this, too, a lot. But the one that I really, really want you guys to hear is that it's weird that Lamar Jackson is being called injury prone and being blamed for injuries when every single person on our offense was also injured this year. Let's, let's take that into account. There's something else going wrong. And a lot of you guys you know, said John Harbaugh needs to go. This is one in your corner. This is, this is a victory on your side and not on my side. Because it's not, it's it's not uh, it's not right that we're blaming Lamar Jackson when Lamar Jackson got hurt uh, the last two seasons. Our number one receiver Bateman got hurt last two seasons. Duvernay got hurt last season. 
Uh, Ronnie Stanley's been out the last two seasons, and he, he was hurt this season at times as well. Uh, several offensive linemen were hurt this season. I think the only one that was in every single game uh, might have been Lindenbaum and I think Morgan Moses, and I think Morgan Moses you know, was hurt during games, but I don't think he missed a full game, if I remember correctly. All our running backs were hurt several times the last two seasons. Our tight end has been hurt several times the last two seasons. Now, he hasn't missed significant time, but he hasn't missed games for, for sure. Everyone on our offense has been hurt, not just Lamar. That That's... You guys are talking about John Harbaugh needs to go. That's on John Harbaugh. And that's it's just not right to just blame Lamar. He's the only one on our offense that get, gets injury prone. That's not right. About the deals that we've seen recently, Deshaun Watson, whose resume is nowhere near as good as Lamar's, netted the Texans three first round picks. And Hallelujah. Thank goodness. This is the here's another thing that people are doing that I hate. I'm I'm this last time I'm gonna stop it because I know you guys want to hear what they're gonna say. But Deshaun Watson is here. Lamar is here based on everything except for throwing accuracy. Character, Lamar wins. Uh, Ability to win football games, Lamar wins. Ability to have a better offense with less pieces, Lamar wins. What happens when you don't have DeAndre Hopkins and you still have Deshaun Watson? You suck. What happens if you don't have any receivers that would start in the football game, and you have Lamar Jackson, you're number one in your uh, division. That, come on, that that means something. That means something. That's all I'm saying. Two fourths. I I looked at this just for fun because you know how I love the NFL draft. I mean, and this is this is purely hypothetical. But like, what if I told you you could have Houston's second overall pick and twelfth overall pick this year? In addition to some future assets, maybe you get a first round pick to play around with later. The Texans have have assets because of the Deshaun Watson trade. I'm just saying, if I were the Ravens and I was facing paying $250 million fully guaranteed or having a boatload of picks in this year's draft as well as future drafts to start over with, and we already know they've got a fantastic defense in place, I think you know, you'd have a shot to draft a quarterback with one of those picks. It's awfully intriguing. Awfully intriguing. George Taylor, where do you stand? Is it intriguing? Is it crazy for the Ravens to consider trading Lamar? Yeah, it's crazy. It's a nonsense sandwich. <laughs> Would you rather be the Houston Texans right now, or you'd rather be the Cleveland Browns? Ooh, ooh. I, I think I'd rather be the Texans, to be honest with you. Who's closer to winning a championship right now? The Cleveland I, Browns or the Houston Texans? The, I mean, Browns, the, answer, the, the Browns. The, the Browns. The Browns. The answer's the Cleveland Browns. Okay. If I was like, here's a nonsense sandwich, Dave, would you ask me, can I get it toasted? Or would you say, no, thank you? I'd say, no, thank you. Yeah, because it's a nonsense sandwich. They should have paid Lamar Jackson earlier. They kept playing this game and pushing it down. And as we know, the longer you wait to pay your quarterback, the more expensive it gets. Then here come the Browns with this desperate, ridiculous contract that blows up the market. That's also the Ravens' fault. You're relying on other people, particularly the Cleveland Browns, who never do anything right. And what do they do? Crash the market. Now, I... So but I wanted to jump in. Sorry about that. I had to get the charger. Um, but I want to say that Joy is right here. Um, and she is right for a myriad of reasons. The most important reason is that first round draft picks don't mean nothing. This is, we're so, I don't even know how to say it. As just human beings, we are so um, optimistic about the future, right? And we say these draft picks are so great. Guys, <clears throat> go back and go back in time and see how many teams have successfully drafted a quarterback in the first round. Let's just, guys, if we just sit down, for example, and just take the, the draft that Lamar was drafted in. There were five quarterbacks drafted in the first round. Only two are certified successes, Right? So that's less than 50% rate, right? Uh, again, 40% hit rate. The number one pick, Baker Mayfield, almost out the league. The number two quarterback that went, Sam Darnold. I, I mean, all, he's a backup now, right? He's not almost out the league, but he's definitely a backup. The number, the number three quarterback, Josh Allen, very successful. No MVPs, no Super Bowls. Okay. Um, and can't get past Patrick Mahomes, which is fair because we cannot either. And then the number the number four quarterback, Josh Rosen, he packed up. I don't even know where he's at. He packed up. 
The number five quarterback, Lamar Jackson, has an MVP and has a, a better record than all five of those quarterbacks when he's playing in the game. And we're going to trade him to go back into that pool and try to draft a quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Guys, that, that, that's hard to do. And if we end up with one of those other three and not the two, you've doomed your franchise for another four years. When right now we're on the precipice of being a, a, a at least a, a conference uh, a contender, right? So it's just, she's 100% right. So shout out to her. I got to give her credit where it's due. Look at things like this. Are you building for the future or are you trying to win championships? Are you trying to stay consistent or are you trying to win championships? Because we see organizations just, just they gamble like I do at Blackjack. I just put like one little chip down. <laughs> I'll just won that, the one chip. If I win, that's great. I'm going to take that chip back and I'll leave the one that I won right there. And that's, I'm going to play for four hours because I'm never pushing anything. But I'm at the table. Y'all came and went. Y'all came and went, but I'm still here. But that's not fun. Nobody likes to gamble with me. That's a terrible night. That's not fun. You would leave the table. You'd be like, I'm that playing with the That doesn't sound very high limits, y'all. That doesn't sound very high. I'll be honest. I'm not high limits. Right. You, don't, you don't want to participate in any of that. So that's what some organizations do. They just play it safe. They just want to be consistent. And there's something to being consistently competitive. But are the Ravens contenders without Lamar Jackson? Are the Texans contenders right now without Deshaun Watson? No. Now, in a few years, they might be. But we're still giving them a lot of grace considering how they've done business for a very long time. So if you're asking me if you have a better chance of winning a Super Bowl with Lamar Jackson than without, I believe the answer is yes. And if you have to pay him that money and then do a better job as an organization of drafting and making other moves, which, by the way, you're going to need to do anyway. Because right now, Lamar Jackson might have the weakest. Uh, sorry, I had to jump in really quickly. Because she was on point. On point. Guys, a lot of you Ravens fans, I've, I've been seeing you guys. I've been seeing you say it. Oh, the Ravens are good all the time. We're good. We're trying to win Super Bowls. Right again, I'm 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 gonna say this to you guys, okay? I'm gonna say this. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. The last time we won a Super Bowl, okay, was ten year over ten years ago now, right? The 2012 season, I believe. Magical, magical season. I could be I could be wrong. It's off the top of the head, but that is not, you know, that's not competing with, you know, the Chiefs. And that's who we want to compete with. We don't want to compete with the Browns and the Houston Texans. We want to compete with the Chiefs. And the way you compete with the Chiefs is you pay your guys. Simple as that. So um, she's 100% right there. Skill position group. No doubt. In the league, particularly for a quarterback of his caliber. And here's what's interesting, though. I don't think... We're giving the Ravens grace. I think they've earned it. I was thinking back historically, the last 20 years of the teams that have won multiple Super Bowls, only the Ravens have won multiple Super Bowls with quarterbacks that will not sniff the Hall of Fame. You can think about the last 20 years. The Bucks have won multiple Super Bowls. Well, Brady was there. The Patriots have won multiple Super Bowls. Well, Brady was there. The Chiefs have won multiple Super Bowls. Well, Mahomes was there. The Rams, if you count the last 25 years, 25 years, Kurt Warner was there, Matthew Stafford, Fringe. The Steelers, the Giants, Ben Roethlisberger and Eli Manning will likely get in. But the Ravens, to their credit, have won multiple Super Bowls in the last 20 years with Trent Dilfer and Joe Flacco. Two right. quarterbacks that will not even sniff the Hall of Fame. So when I think about it, Joy, I'm like... So so this is... So guys, I got to call BSC. All right, he's, he's, he's not having a good day today because there's a couple things we have to call BS on. First, the Super Bowl win in 2000 with Trent Dofer, Um Sorry, I said 2000. I don't think it's 2000. I think it might be 2002. Off the top of my head. Sorry, guys. It's late. That defense was awesome. That's the best. See, again, we're not... He's, he's just taking this one fact, and this is what you got to be careful of, not just in sports and everything, guys. Why... Did we do that? You know, that's the question. Why did the Ravens win with Trent Dofer? Well, we had arguably the best defense ever. Okay, like we are, he's getting crazy. We got to, he's like, we have to give them credit. No, you don't have to give the Ravens credit. The credit goes to the best defense ever, 
Ray Lewis ain't walking through that door. That's the first thing. Second thing, right? Joe Flacco. He just tried to, you know, um, man, I was about to curse. Sorry. He's trying to poop on Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco, okay, well, you can say whatever he he can, he's not a Hall of Famer. Yes, he's a, a good quarterback. He's not a great quarterback. Yes. But the beautiful thing about football and the way that it's structured is you do not have to be the best. You have to be the best this Sunday. And he literally was the one of the best quarterbacks ever in that playoff stretch because he had the most touchdowns and zero interceptions ever in a playoff stretch. Jo- tied with Joe Montana. So when is the next time you're going to get a good quarterback who plays on the level of Joe Montana? And when's the next time you're going to get a defense that is arguably the best defense of all time? Never. Which is, those two things are just very, very lucky, to be honest, right? Again, and defense is the less lucky, but you can have a good defense. But in today's NFL, in today's NFL, you're not holding teams to zero points in the Super Bowl. Zero touchdowns in the Super Bowl, let me say. So it's just not, not real. I have to give the Ravens respect for knowing that whether they have Lamar or they do not have Lamar, they have found a way, along with only four other NFL franchises, to figure out how to win multiple Super Bowls based on building whether you have a great quarterback, you don't have a great quarterback. Because regardless of how much we say it on TV, it's hard to win them things. And it's hard to get there, clearly. And if the Ravens are one of five other franchises or four other franchises that have done it, then I think they might be doing something right. But, Will, what do you think? Yeah, no, that's that's a fair point because... What I was going to get to is they're, they're one of the few teams where, I would say most teams where it's, it's truly about the logo, right? It's about the Ravens. It's not about Lamar. It's not about anything else. And that's what Ozzie Newsom did a great job with. And you mentioned playing with those type of quarterbacks is because they built that roster to be able to compete like that. And so I, 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 won't, I would not be surprised with any scenario. I wouldn't be shocked if he played under the tag. I wouldn't be shocked that they end up paying him, and I wouldn't be shocked if they traded him. Like, there's so many variables that go around. If he does stay, okay, yes, they got rid of Greg Roman. Now they have a coordinator who can possibly, you know, bring some kind of sophisticated passing game for him. But it's going to be huge to get some weapons because he truly needs someone to throw to. Like, that is, if you keep him, that is, like, number one. You must do that. So, I mean, I, I can see all these situations. And, again, I, I know you guys are hating me for jumping back in and forth. Also, it's it's hypocritical what the Ravens are also doing. And I know you guys saying, oh, Jason, do you love the Ravens? No, I, I do. The Ravens are my boys. I, I Listen, guys, I give them money, all right? You, you, see, all, you see all this stuff over here, the, the Ravens stuff there? I got, look at this. Look. You see this here? I got Ray Lewis here. Come, guys, I am a fan of the Ravens. I give them money. However, it's hypocritical to say that this is a team first team. It is the power of the collective. But then at the same time, on offense, you say, Lamar, get it done. That's what's happening, okay? You say, Lamar and Mark, throw the ball to each other and get it done. Because guess what? When, when Lamar wasn't in the game, only one player played to the, the, his standard, and that was J.K. Dobbins. And, you know, J.K. Dobbins has been hurt half the last two years. So... That it's just not right to to put everything on Lamar, and then when it's time to pay people, say, "Oh, sorry, we don't do that." But I I really believe that for, for this year, I think he does stay. They don't trade him. He probably does play under the tag, and they probably use this as an experience to see, like, let's give him everything that he can ha- have this year and put him in a, in a and put him in a position to succeed. Let me ask you well, what would you do? You played ball for a long time in total, I'm sure in excess of 20 yeah. 25 plus years. When I think about the Ravens, whether we like it or not, this is a reality. They're not great at drafting offense. They're really good at drafting defense. Like, whether you like it or not, this is just what it comes down to. When you think about the receivers they've drafted over the course of time, they've been good players. They haven't been Hall of Fame caliber players. You think about the defensive players they've drafted and acquired over their history, they've been really good to Hall of Fame, to all pros, to first ballots, all of the things. So no matter how much the Ravens want to try to help Lamar Jackson, for whatever reason, maybe it's the culture, maybe it's the coaching, maybe it's what they prioritize, they're not good at picking offense. So... How do you think that should impact their decision, and what should they do? I'm sure, but I'm, I'm sure they know that. 
You know, just like early in the year, we talked about the Eagles having issues stopping the run. So they went and got two veteran, you know, D linemen to help. We talked last year about how uh, Cincinnati could not protect Joe Burrow. So they went and got more linemen. Like they, like they know that. So I feel like them knowing like, hey, let's find some people outside to give him a chance. I think they're going to address that. I, I just... I can't subscribe to the building a great roster and not having a franchise quarterback thing in today's NFL. I, I just can't do it. How did that work out for the Niners this year? Mm, it got them pretty close. It's pretty close to championship? That's close enough. It's close enough. No, it's not. No, see, no, no, no. Not for, not for me. It's not close enough for me. It's bullshit. It's not close. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, YouTube. I didn't mean to curse. It's not close enough for me. I'm about winning championships, okay? All right? These money that I'm laying out on these tickets is about winning championships, okay? The time that I spend talking to you guys, it's about winning championships. Um, again, I think the Ravens do know they're not good on drafting offense. Even if you talk to people like when Ozzie um, was retiring or stepping back, he even said himself, right? He knows that he's drafted a pro bowler at every position but receiver. He knows that. They keep in track of this, right? So I do think that means they'll... Man, they they can make a leap. If you pay Lamar Jackson, you take that first round pick in the draft that a lot of people are saying is weak. I see Mel Kuyper. He said it was a weak draft. Go get you DeAndre Hopkins. You are a Super Bowl caliber team. That's what we need. That is what we're so close. We're so close. Where you're like, hey, we just got to figure out who we need. Just like the Jets trying to figure out who we we need. Feel like the Diners need a quarterback. A quarterback for sure. Yeah. Look at the other teams that were at the at the end of the line this year. Hurts, All Pro, Mahomes, MVP, Burrow, MVP finalist. Let's look at last year's Super Bowl. Stafford, pretty great quarterback. Right. Part of the reason why they won. Up against who? Joe Burrow. What was the year before that? The idea that you can just build a great roster and not have a franchise quarterback sounds good when it was, what year did they win with Joe Flacco? But well, only one of those well, quarterbacks already has the contract. Like uh, those rosters were be were able to be built That's, because of having these, these young. I don't disagree with that, right. but I do disagree with the idea that you can win without one because the. I don't. I don't of, think you can. You know, no, no, I don't think you but, can. But right. But like that's what I'm saying. Like, are the Ravens trying to win a championship, or are they just trying to be really good? I guess it's not so much winning without one, though, Joy, as much as maybe you don't need Lamar Jackson because we're not that far removed from the Seahawks winning with Russell Wilson, who was. Could, yeah, we but he are. wasn't. That what year good. was that? I'm saying even that when, was almost ten years ago. Even when the Bucks beat the Chiefs, Brady didn't play well. Like it's like we've we've Dude. seen teams win. This, with- this man is crazy. This man is out his god darn mind. Yes, Brady did play well, and he didn't. Again, the defense was very good, so Brady didn't have to um, go and throw for 500 yards. However, Brady did have great games leading up to that. Right, the reason, like again, San Francisco didn't make it to the Super Bowl, right? So it's not about you know how you play in the Super Bowl. It's about how do you play all those tough games in the AFC? Can you beat Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Trevor Lawrence, the boy in LA? Can you beat all of them without a franchise quarterback? And you go and you go try to draft the quarterback, you have like a 10% chance of hitting. Again, guys, look at every single year of the first round and see what how many quarterbacks are actually hits. I guarantee you it's less than it's less than 30%. And I might do a video on that because I don't think people are, are actually realizing that. Without stellar quarterback. Play. Not throughout the season, not to get to the Super Bowl. Even if you didn't have a stellar play in the Super Bowl, you got to the Super Bowl. Like, you're not even getting to the Super Bowl. You're not even winning well, multiple Well, step one games. for them was they they moved on from Greg Roman because they just, I think, they felt very, very limited on what they can do offensively. And everyone kind of caught on like, okay, yes, they had this sophisticated run game that people are trying to figure out. Well, they figured it out. And also, they had a lot of guys that weren't that weren't healthy. They had so all their running backs were injured. Bad yeah. luck. And then Lamar got injured. And then there was no one else to throw See, to besides Mark Andrews. I think they needed Will Escape go. A conversation for another time. But to move on from Greg Roman to Todd Munkin, an offensive coordinator at Georgia, who was formerly at Tampa. And by the way, Tampa was not good when he was there. Also, it was not promised Lamar's gonna be there. Like, who said that? <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's, to me, a lot of interesting things are going on in Baltimore. 
subscribe. And and so that's another thing that guys that is scary, but that's for another video. So um again, Joy, I think she did good. Uh a Echo, I don't know his name. Um, but I thought he was a little wild. But again, we we're so close. Losing Lamar Jackson, we take a step back and we become an average football team. Um, and let's not pretend that we didn't have average seasons without Lamar Jackson. That's another thing that Ravens fans, I think you guys just don't remember. And you can go look at the seasons where, yes, we when Joe Flacco was at his prime and we had Ray Lewis, Hall of Famer, Ed Reed, Hall of Famer, Terrell Suggs, Hall of Famer. When we had those defensive players, yes, we were very competitive, right? But... Guys, defense is not the same in this league. You can't win like that. And it's just unrealistic to think that. So you guys let me know what you think about this video. And let me know what you think about the new format. I'm trying to do different things, you know, throw a couple of stuff there so you can see. Do some cool stuff like that. So uh, you guys let me know. Thanks and go Ravens.